Hello guys, welcome back uh, to our uh, third uh, review of uh, the pharmacology. Um, so today we're going to review a bunch of topics. The first topic is dermatology. Um, and uh, the thing with dermatology, it's uh, kind of a lower yield topic. Uh, but within dermatology itself, I think there is a few high yield points that if you know them and if you understand them, I think they become easy points for grabs. Um, and in dermatology, there's a bunch of topics that we're going to discuss. They're kind of scattered, uh, but hopefully uh, they make sense to you. So the first topic in dermatology is antibiotics. So uh, we're going to discuss the topical antibiotics. So uh, first one is bacitracin, polymyxin, and neomycin. And these are three antibiotics that are used together. If you go over the counter and you purchase ne uh, like triple antibiotic, th these are the antibiotics that are uh, that are uh, put in in that compound. And it's a broad spectrum. They're used to cover the you know the skin flora, um, and uh, it's a broad spectrum. It's mainly used to prevent wound infections. So any cut or abrasions, uh, you can put the uh, triple antibiotics on it. That's the first uh, first uh, thing that we're going to cover. The second uh, medication is uh, mupirocin. Uh, mupirocin is a, a cream that's active against uh, Staph aureus and also against methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. Uh, so the main use it's used for empatigo because we know that in empatigo, um, uh, Staph aureus is the main culprit, and then it's also used to, to decolonize uh, MRSA in the nares. So a lot of patients in the hospital, they come in and they swab their nose, and they find MRSA, and they use mupirocin to colonize, uh, to colonize uh, the MRSA in the nares. So that's the first, uh, first subtopic. Second subtopic is acne. <coughs> And uh, acne, as you know, that it's caused by uh, by uh, the bacteria. Pro uh, I think it's propionum. Um, and um, the treatment of acne involves uh, sort of three lines. The first line of treatment is topical antibiotics uh, or topical vitamin A derivatives. Uh, second line is oral antibiotics uh, if they fail the topicals. And then the third line is oral vitamin A derivatives. So on the right hand of the screen, you'll see the antibiotics that uh, that are used in acne. So clindamycin, erythromycin, uh, metronidazole, sodium sulfacetamide, and dapsone. And uh, we're not going to go into too much details of how these antibiotics work. I think the highest yield uh, to know is the clindamycin, uh, erythromycin, and metronidazole. These are the biggest sort of antibiotics that are used for uh, topical acne treatment. Um, so that's the first line that you use topical antibiotics. The second line is you use topical vitamin A uh, derivatives. So uh, vitamin A is called retinoic acid, um, and the topical form of it is called tritinoin. So tritinoin is quote-unquote retinoic acid, or the same as vitamin A. And how it works, it's actually uh, pretty interesting, and I think it would be good for you to know it for exam purposes, is that it, it's essential for normal differentiation of epithelial cells into specialized tissue. And you're going to ask me, how does this fit into acne? So in acne, the, you know, the keratinocytes kind of don't, uh, don't uh, uh, differentiate into specialized tissues, and they sort of close the skin pores. And when they close the skin pores, they get infected, and you, uh, you get acne. So vitamin A helps the differentiation of these of these epithelial cells and kind of helps the uh, the pore uh, the pores to stay open. So it's used. Uh, the topical medication is used in in acne. Um, third line, uh, if the topical uh, doesn't work, uh, is uh, is oral retinoic acid. So uh, the oral retinoic acid is called isotretinoin. Again, it's isotretinoin. And it's a vitamin A derivative. It's used for severe cystic acne. So this is our last line for acne treatment. And I'll tell you why it's last line. Um, it has a horrible uh, teratogenic profile. So it's a very known teratogen. Um, it crosses the placenta and it causes cleft palate and cardiac abnormalities. So that's why it's really restricted for uh, patients who have failed uh, topical uh, topical vitamin A or oral antibiotics uh, or topical antibiotics. Uh, in order for you to prescribe or to use uh, isotretinoin, you need two forms of birth control for women. Um, so that's something that the test makers will, will grill you on. You'll see uh, lots of questions on, 
uh, on, uh, on isotretinoids. So the question will give you, will say, uh, oh, a patient has severe acne, the physician wants to prescribe isotretinoin, what do you need to do before, uh, before you prescribe it? So the first thing that you need to do is that you need to get a beta HCG to make sure that the patient is not pregnant. And the second thing is that you need to make sure that there are two forms of birth control for women. Uh, men, I don't think it's as stringent and I don't think they need, um, you know, they, they need anything. Um, the second side effect for isotretinoin is it can cause some hepatotoxicity. Not very high yield, uh, but the high yield point is that isotretinoin can also cause pseudotumor cerebri, and it's um, a disease where the uh, intracranial pressure is actually elevated, and it's idiopathic. We don't really know why it happens, uh, but it does happen. I don't think you guys have studied it yet in pathology, uh, but when you do study it, um, isotretinoin causes pseudotumor cerebri, so it's something to keep in mind. Um, other things that I put for vitamin A is um, this is not on your farm exam, but it's very, very important for step one. And I thought since we're talking about retinoic acid, we would bring it here is that uh, vitamin A is uh, used for acute promyelocytic leukemia, and it's also used for measles. And it's the same idea that it helps of differentiation of cells into specialized uh, tissue. Um, Third subtopic is uh, fungal infections, uh, dermatologic fungal infections, and I didn't want to go into like too much in depth into the fungal infection. I think the biggest thing that you need to know is which uh, which antifungals are used for sort of what infections. So tinea capitis is a um, uh, fungal infection of the of the head. You use grisufulvin for it, and we're gonna go into depth uh, later. I think in exam five about like all of these antifungals and the mechanism for it. But for now, I think just for this exam, I think it would be good to just know which one is used for what. Um, so griseofulvin is used for tinea capitis. Onychomycosis is a um, fungal infection of the nails and you use uh, terbenafine, which is a medication that's oral. Uh, griseofulvin is oral as well. Um, if you have oral or esophageal candidiasis, you use nystatin, which is, you know, like a liquid medication that you give it uh, by mouth. Um, and if you have superficial candidiasis or vaginitis or any of like the superficial fungal infections, use the topical azole. So ketoconazole, fluconazole, and myconazole. And again, this is just a brief like overview. Uh, more in depth will be talked about in the interfungal section in exam five. Uh, next uh, subtopic is uh, herpes simplex infections, and this is caused by uh, HSV virus, HSV1 or HSV2. Um, and what I want you guys to know from herpes simplex is that you use an antiviral called acyclovir. And again, we're going <clears> to, <throat> later we'll talk about how acyclovir works and whatnot, I think, in later exams. But for now, I think um, it's important to know if you have oral labial uh, HSV, you use topical acyclovir. And if you have systemic HSV, you have, you use IV uh, acyclovir. And this is like a classic picture of, uh, of uh, acyclovir, um, uh, you know, infection. Uh, next subtopic is uh, topical glucocorticoids. Um, and topical glucocorticoids, uh, basically it's used for, you know, any inflammation. So classic uh, topical glucocorticoids is beta-methasone, uh, flucinolone, hydrocortisone, or triamcinolone. And how they work is that they have an anti-inflammatory effect. They block this NF-kappa-B, uh, which is an uh, inflammatory uh, mediator. Um, and uh, they suppress the B and T cell uh, function. It's used for sort of any kind of topical itis. So uh, dermatitis, it's used for uh, eczema, any used topical inflammation. Um, and side effects, uh, so we talked previously, I think Mike talked to you guys about uh, oral or systemic glucocorticoids and have they have a lot of systemic side effects like adrenal suppression, uh, hypoglycemia and things like that. Uh, for the topical uh, side effects, uh, biggest thing is you actually get skin atrophy uh, and you get delayed uh, wound healing. And it's thought that if you, um, if you suppress these anti-inflammatory, you, you know, you delay the wound healing. I'm not really sure what's the mechanism of skin atrophy, but it's actually a high yield point that you need to know for the topical glucocorticoids. 
Uh, next up topic is the immunomodulators. Um, so, you know, these are medications that modulate the immune function pretty much, hence the name. Uh, so the first medication is, uh, I actually don't know how that is pronounced, imiquimod? I think it's imiquimod. Um, and how it works is that it stimulates cytokine and interferon release. It's used for two things, uh, actinic keratosis, which is a precancerous uh, squamous cell lesion, and genital warts, mainly um, HPV uh, genital warts. Um, actually, honestly, the, the, the high yield point for this one is uh, the genital wart, warts part. If you remember that imiquimod is used for genital warts, it'll be golden. Uh, tacrolimus, um, I think also we talked about it, it's a calcineurin inhibitor, uh, inhibits T-cell activation. It's used for atopic dermatitis because it's thought that atopic dermatitis is mediated by, uh, by T-cell, uh, by, uh, by T-cell, I think it's CD, uh, CD8. Um, so, uh, tacrolimus is used for atopic dermatitis. Uh, next subtopic is ectoparasites. Um, and ectoparasite is a fancy name for uh, ecto is outside, parasite is a parasite. So it's a parasite that lives outside of its host. And there's two types of parasites, uh, scabies uh, or head lice. Um, so scabies, the name for the organism is uh, Sarcoptes scabii. Um, and the symptoms for it is that you get uh, itching at night and then you get like these lines in the web spaces of the hands and feet. And then head lice, we all know what head lice is. Um, the organism uh, that causes head lice is pediculus humanus. So this is sort of like a, an overview of uh, ectoparasites. So um, treatment for ectoparasites, uh, first, uh, first thing is uh, treatment for scabies. So you can use permethrin cream. And this cream, you kind of give it to the person that has scabies and they apply it through their whole body. And how it works is that it blocks depolarization of the sodium channel. Um, the second medication that's used is lindane. And lindane uh, blocks uh, GABA channels. So they block these channels in the parasite and they kind of cause uh, paralysis of the, uh, uh, of the parasite. And side effect of lindane is you get uh, neurotoxicity and seizures. Um, and if you think about it, you don't really have to memorize it. Because if you think of what GABA does, so GABA is an inhibitory uh, transmitter. And um, if you inhibit GABA, uh, then uh, you're going to inhibit the, uh, uh, the inhibitory, which means that you'll have too much excitation and you'll get uh, seizures. Um, so seizures is sort of like an overexcited state. So we don't actually like to use lindane in children and pregnant because it can uh, get into the bloodstream, cross the blood-brain barrier, and uh, causes these seizures and neurotoxicity in, uh, in kids. So high yield points for scabies, you can use permethrin and you can use lindane, and lindane causes seizures. Um, second uh, second uh, disease state is lice or pediculosis. And uh, you can use um, uh, you can use permethrin, uh, which is we talked about earlier. You can use ivermectin uh, or malathion or benzoyl alcohol. Uh, honestly, if you just remember that um, that lice, you can use permethrin, ivermectin, maybe malathion, uh, you'll be golden. Um, so, the, the biggest thing that I actually want you guys to get out of this is how to identify scabies. And I know this is not like a pathology or a micro course, but uh, it usually comes in the context of, uh, of uh, farm. So a test question will give you uh, this picture and it'll tell you a patient that's coming in with itching and I'll give you this picture and I'll tell you what is it that you want to treat them with. So it's sort of like a second or third uh, order question. So you have to identify what is the lesion. So it looks like this um, or, you know, or like this and uh, you'll have to identify the treatment. So be comfortable with the visualization of scabies. And again, it's something that's not important for this form exam per se, but I want to prep you guys for uh, step one. Uh, next subtopic is psoriasis. And the psoriasis is really an excessive uh, keratinocyte proliferation. It is thought to have an autoimmune uh, etiology, and sometimes it's associated with arthritis. So we call it psoriatic arthritis. 
And the goal for treatment is to suppress uh, the, an suppress the uh, inflammatory response. So uh, scratch this anti. Uh, goal for treatment is suppress inflammatory response. And the treatment for it is corticosteroids, uh, UV light, or immunomodulators. And we're going to talk a little, a little bit about the immunomodulators. So there is um, three immunomodulators that you can use for psoriasis. So the first one is tazarotene which is a vitamin A analog. And it's thought that vitamin A has also some um, anti-inflammatory uh, effect. Uh, second medication, which is the one that I actually want you guys to know, because I remember there was a UWorld question last time, and it's sort of uh, a little bit of high, higher yield. So this medication is called calcipotriene, and it's a vitamin D analog. And it's also thought that vitamin D uh, has some uh, anti-inflammatory effect. And then the last medication is etanercept, uh, which is a TNF inhibitor. So as Mike talked to you guys about the TNF inhibitors, um, they block, you know, TNF response and they block the inflammatory response. So you can use etanercept uh, for, uh, for psoriasis. So in summary, psoriasis, a uh, couple words, autoimmune, you block the autoimmune response and then you can use uh, vitamin D or vitamin A or TNF uh, inhibitor. And then just uh, last, uh, you know, kind of miscellaneous uh, things that may show up here and there in exams, but I wouldn't say that they're super high yield. Uh, first thing is the trichogenics, which is medications that uh, increase hair. Um, first one is minoxidil, and then the second one is finasteride. So minoxidil actually is a medication that was intentionally, uh, that was initially used for high blood pressure. So it's a direct arteriolar vasodilator. And it's used for androgenic, uh, sorry, it's a direct arteriolar vasodilator. So it's used for high blood pressure. They found after they started using the medication that people started like growing hair. And they're like, wow, this is great. Why don't we use it for alopecia? So they actually developed a topical uh, form of it uh, that's used for androgenic alopecia, which is pretty much male, uh, male pattern hair loss. Uh, other uses for it is that you, you know, as I said, you use it for high blood pressure. Uh, the second medication is finasteride, which is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So just a little background, when you uh, make testosterone, uh, it's converted to DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone, by uh, this enzyme, 5-alpha reductase. And really, uh, DHT is the active form of testosterone. Um, and they found that in androgenic alopecia, uh, it's dependent on DHT. So if you block uh, conversion uh, of testosterone to DHT, you'll have uh, more hair growth. Um, so finasterides is used for andro androgenic alopecia, and there's other uses for it. It's used for uh, BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, and we're going to talk about it a little bit later in the next, uh, next chapters to come. Um, second miscellaneous topic is salicylic acid, which is a keratolytic. Carado is the, you know, the keratin, and lytic is lice. So it's used to remove excess keratin, and it's used for warts or calluses. Uh, and the last thing is hyperpigmentation uh, agent, which is hydroquinone. Uh, and how it works is they inhibit tyrosinase. And you remember tyrosinase is the enzyme that uh, converts uh, uh, tyrosine to, uh, to melanin. Uh, and it's used to reduce uh, skin hyperpigmentation. So this is the uh, sort of summary for the, der the topical uh, dermatologic agents. I think if you remember the high yield points uh, of this, you'll be golden. You won't have to spend uh, too much time on it. And uh, that concludes our discussion with dermatology.